The public should not wait for a certain period of time to criticise and hold the current Pakatan Harapan led government accountable. Petaling Jaya MP Marajin Abdullah said the criticism is vital to point out to the government if things are not right. I think that, you know, we owe it to um, the change that we just uh, accomplished to actually voice out. Because uh, if we wait, um, it, it, it will be too late to even voice out. And I think that, you know, people have been voicing out uh, with regards to the appointments, uh, with regards to um, the GST and um, prices not going down but uh, still remaining. Uh, but it has to be much louder. And, and, and we shouldn't be waiting until after the, uh, the 100 days to raise our criticism. It's too late already. She said you know, this at a public forum on the importance of a strong opposition for a vibrant democracy on Saturday. University Malaya's Faculty of Law's Associate Professor Dr. Azmi Sharam said criticisms are needed but the public has to be clever about it. There's no point talking about no changes in the law when parliament hasn't sat. And then once parliament seats, how long do you, how long do you wait before they, you know, so I think, like Maria says, you criticise when you have to. There's no time limit of that. But we have to be a bit cleverer about it because it's, it's, uh, the, the, the fight isn't so blunt as it used to be. It's, it's, a, it's a lot more refined now. So to, 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 start to look um, intelligent, you, know, to, you have to be more refined as well. So I don't think there's a time limit, but there's a method. The Pakatan Harapan government promised several initiatives in its 100 days election manifesto. Fellow panel speaker Tunku Zain Al Abidin Ibn Tuanku Muhris, who is the founding president of the Institute of Democracy and Economics Affairs or IDEAS, said there should be more vigilance now as there is so much goodwill from the public. We should be wary of attempts to radically change things, ostensibly in the name of reform, but it might actually turn out to be instruments for oppression. So I think it's, we need to be vigilant now. Uh, because there's so much goodwill from the public, we need to be even more careful. Uh, and I think it's already happened. I think there's been a couple of U-turns already. When Tun Mahathir said that the Anti-Fake News will be Act will be amended, he had to be reminded, no, you said repeal. And then now the position is repeal. When Tun Mahathir said uh, that he would appoint himself as Education Minister, again, he had to be reminded, no, the manifesto said something else. And then there was a U-turn. When uh, Tommy Thomas was uh, recommended uh, as AG, again, uh, many people pointed out, the manifesto said no, it's supposed to be an MP, but for some reason that particular uh, commitment has, you know, people have, oh, you know, you need to change the constitution first. Fair enough, there may be a logic to that, but the point is, we need to keep the promises in the manifesto uh, to account. The forum was co-organised by the Bar Council's Constitutional Law Committee and the Bar Council's National Young Lawyers and Pupils Committee.